It's Monday morning and we're in Simpsonville, South Carolina and I'm in my little study down here and uh, we've got uh, a few odds and ends that we've got to take care of down here before we go back up on the mountain. So we'll be broadcasting from here for a little bit. One of my favorite parables of all of the parables that Jesus told was the parable of the sower and the seed. Uh, it's one of the few parables that Jesus actually explained. Um, and so it's uh, unique and unusual in that respect. It's found in Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse 4. And it said that people were coming from all over the area. And he said, a sower went out to sow seed. And some fell on hard soil along by the roadway. Some fell on rocky soil. And some fell amongst the thorns. But some fell amongst good soil. When his disciples heard the parable, they wanted it explained to them, and that's what I like about this so much, is no guessing about what this parable means and what its focal uh, message is. And that is there's going to be lots of different kinds of results when we tell people the good news of Jesus Christ, whether it's in a church service or whether it's out in the community. When we tell this uh, parable uh, of the good soil, it's actually the way people respond to the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, when he explained the parable beginning down at verse 12 or 11, uh, he says the hard soil represents uh, the roadway and the fact that people hear it uh, but don't respond to it at all because their hearts have become hardened. When he gets down to the rocky soil, he said these are the ones who hear it and seem to receive it, uh, but there's no firm root. And so the, the conversion really never takes place. Uh, they may come to the altar, they may even come to church for a while, uh, but there's no root. They, they really didn't accept it fully and believe it fully, and therefore there's really no faith for the grace to take place. And then he said some fell amongst thorns. These are the people who received it, understood it pretty well, uh, but there's so many other things in their lives, so many other uh, side interests in their lives, and it's, uh, as he describes it, uh, choked out with worries and riches and pleasure. Uh, you've seen people like these. You've seen people who harden their hearts. They're not receptive to the gospel at all. You've seen those that uh, have rocky soil where uh, there's no firm root, and although they, they hear it and say they believe it, really when the test comes, they, they don't have the root to say, I really do believe and trust in Jesus. And certainly we've all seen people with the thorny soil where their worries and their pleasures uh, far greater desire to them. And Jesus even uses the word temptation uh, comes along and takes away the, the good news of Jesus Christ. But then there's finally the good soil. The, the good soil is the one that not only hears it, believes it, but he says they have an honest and a good heart and they hold fast to that profession of faith. And here's the big test. They bear fruit. That is, they're not just hearers only. They also become doers. They bear fruit where they try to lead others to Christ, try to influence others for Christ. And they do it with, and here's a key word right in the text in the New American Standard, perseverance. They continue on. Even when they run into rocky soil, even when they run into the thorny soil, even when they run into the hard soil, they persevere. They continue to share their faith with others. But here's what I love to explain about this parable and why it's one of my favorites. God didn't call us to be soil experts. We're not geologists. We're not supposed to go around and decide where the hard soil is and not share the gospel. We're not supposed to try to decide where the rocky soil is and decide it's never going to take root. We're not supposed to worry about the thorny soil where it seems like they have so much riches and pleasure in their lives that they'll never respond. We're not supposed to go around looking for a little patch of good soil someplace. But we're supposed to go around to the leaky seed basket. That is, we're to go around and get scatter the seed. You see, unlike the farming illustration here, there's no shortage of seed. The gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ is inexhaustible in its supply. And we're not supposed to be geologists trying to judge soil. Because if we do, we'll judge it wrong every time. I remember in a tape that James, James Kennedy did, 
uh, telling about evangelism explosion, his very first time into a home was with a beer drinking, smoking, uh, carnal kind of man that he would have judged immediately as being hard soil, never going to accept the gospel. But in tears, he prayed and received Christ and became an active part of Kennedy's church. You see, we're not supposed to be soil experts. We're just supposed to share, share the good news and allow that seed to be scattered all around us. And if we're really Christians, we'll do it with perseverance and we'll do it bearing fruit. We'll see some fruits of our labors. Hope that you'll be challenged by the parable of the soils, not to be a judge of the soils. Understand how people respond because Jesus told us many would respond in these different ways but to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Spread that seed everywhere we go. I hope that you have a great day. We're likely to have some snow flurries uh, tonight, uh, excuse me, Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, uh, the first time in the history of South Carolina uh, that they'd had any kind of snow that won't stick, but some kind of snow this early in the year. Hope you have a God-filled day, and I hope that you remember, don't be a soil expert. Just be a seed planter. Go around with a leaky seed basket. Share the good news every place that you can. God bless you. Have a good day.